Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'm going to show you how to make a suji upma, also known as the rava upma. One of my favorite upmas, which I love to have along with some kesari bath and some um, coconut chutney. So today I'm going to show you the tips and tricks of how to make a perfect vegetable rava upma or the suji upma. And I'm sure once you make this recipe, you'll never ever go wrong. So without wasting any time, let's just dive right in and I'll show you how to make this recipe. So to begin making the uh, suji upma or the rava upma, the first thing I'm going to do is to boil some water and um, in a pan and keep it simmering and ready. Okay, and that's extremely critical for making the suji upma. So I'm going to boil some water, and if you're going to be adding some vegetables, uh, it's a good idea to add it to this water as well because uh, the amount of time it's going to take to roast the uh, suji and also adding cooking the vegetables in the water is going to be about the same. Okay, so let's just get started. So um, into my pan, I'm just going to add in three cups of water. So for every cup of suji, you will be adding three cups of water and sometimes three and a half as well. If you like your suji upma to be a, a little more um, uh, sort of more softish uh, consistency and not very thick. So if you want your suji upma to be a little more softer, then you can add about three and a quarter cups of water and it's not going to do any harm. So to this, I'm just going to add in my chopped carrots and um, and I'm also going to add in my beans. So while we are actually cook, roasting the suji, the beans and the carrots will get cooked. But in, we'll give it about a brisk boil in this water along with some salt as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the salt over here. And, and then uh, we'll give it a brisk boil and then for about three to four minutes and the vegetables will be cooked. And keep the water warm, okay? And it's important to use warm water when we're going to be adding this into the roasted suji or the rava. So the water is now simmering and boiling. So at this stage, uh, the, uh, the carrots and the beans will continue to cook in the warm water. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep this to the side and uh, keep it on a low heat on my stove at the back and then show you how to roast the suji and then uh, we'll put things together, okay? So the next step is to roast the suji and I'm going to be roasting it in the tadka which I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be adding um, two tablespoons of ghee and we'll add one tablespoon right at the end. To this I'm just going to add in the mustard seeds and the urad dal. Okay, and you can also add chana dal if you want, the broken chana dal. Urad dal also works well and I'm going to allow the mustard seeds to crackle and the dal to turn light golden brown, okay? And it has to be crisp. And for the dal to turn light golden brown, it's important that you roast it on low heat, okay? Uh, low to medium heat, otherwise it'll brown very quickly. And just roast it. I can see that the dal is turning brown. The mustard seeds are crackling. This looks good. At this stage, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my onions, yes. And lots of ginger and green chilies and you can add um, two green chilies um, or, uh, or one green chili and I like to cut it a little bigger because um, you know, uh, so that you know my, when my children are eating it if they want to eat it they eat it otherwise they just keep it to the side so you can make it out from differentiated between the beans and the green chili okay so I'm just going to saute this for a bit until the onion softens and then I'm going to add in the suji and roast it along with the onions in just a bit, okay? Um, this looks good. Okay, notice that the onions are changing color and then becoming lightly pinkish, okay? So this is the, this is the texture that you want, this is the color that you want. Um, don't brown it too much, we don't want caramelized onions, okay? Great, so now I'm going to add in my rava and then roast it for about 30 40 seconds on medium heat and that's good enough you just need to ensure that the raw smell of the suji or the rava just goes away and we don't need it to brown at all i want good colors in my suji upma i want it to look nice and fresh and not dull this looks good so now i'm going to keep the heat continue to keep the heat in low to medium right now because now that it's roasted, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my warm water that has been simmering at the back, uh, along with the vegetables, okay? And then we're gonna be cooking this upma along with the water. I'm gonna stir it till it thickens up a little bit. And after that, we're gonna simmer it for a, a good five minutes so that all the flavors sort of get uh, come through in the upma. 
So I have my water that's been simmering and just gonna go ahead and add it slowly and, and keep stirring it because otherwise it will start splashing, okay? Look at those beautiful colors. It's just perfect. Ensure that you keep stirring it so that the lumps don't form. Great, so now what I'm gonna do is to actually cover the pan and add another tablespoon of ghee, which I told you, or a little bit more. That's one, and just a little bit more, and then simmer the uh, rava upma for about three to four minutes. Cover the pan, and then I'm gonna simmer it for three to four minutes, so all the flavors just come through. And at this stage, I'm also going to tear up some curry leaves. I always like adding curry leaves towards the end because it gives in a great taste and flavor. If you add it to the oil, uh, the taste is different, but if you actually add it much later, um, the taste is much different. Okay, so I've added that, just a sprig. You can also add two sprigs, it's perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cover the pan and then simmer the upma for about four, three to four minutes, okay? So the upma has been simmering for about three to four minutes. I'm ready to open the pan. And that looks just beautiful. I'm just gonna give it a stir. And when it was simmering, just monitor it. Keep uh, stirring it a little bit once in between. And if you feel it has thickened too much, at that stage, you can add a little more warm water. Because sometimes, uh, depending upon the quality of the suji or the rava, the upma can thicken up um, while it is simmering and then it might become too lumpy and very hard, right? So you can add another quarter cup of water, warm water, always ensure it's warm or hot water, and then uh, you can fix your upma, okay? So that's very important because always with rice and suji and all these grains, uh, you never know. The quality is very different from region to region and it's important so you gauge that. So one last final step is to squeeze in some lemon juice and that's gonna add in a little bit of zinc to the upma, okay? I'm just gonna do that. Great, so give it a stir. And then finally, some chopped coriander leaves and our upma will be done. So I hope you enjoyed watching this recipe of how to make the suji upma, also known as the vegetable rava upma, one of my favorites. Do give this recipe a try. I hope these tips, uh, simple tips of how to make a upma really helped you. And uh, when you do try this in your kitchen, don't forget to share your feedback in the comments below. Also take a snapshot of it and tag me, which is Archana's Kitchen, across all my social channels and would love to hear from you. So until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.